Well, let's take a look at the headlines. Mark Addy is holding the Times. His, oh, yeah. his, pa his paper of choice. Uh, day of pride, joy and peace. This is a great day for us, really. A historic day yesterday in Ireland as Dublin surrendered its claim on Northern Ireland and uh, the power-sharing cabinet held its first meeting in Belfast. Uh -huh. So uh, we were slightly cynical when Mandelson went to Northern Ireland, but he really seems to me he's really he's actually done the business there. Uh, he's managed to make people talk to each other who Star wouldn't previously talk to each other. Uh, so well done, Peter. Do you know what? You don't hear us say that often on the Big Breakfast. Let's go to the Express. Uh, car prices set to crash about time two in rip-off Britain. A four-court <laughs> price war uh, could be on the cards uh, when Mitsubishi slashed 10% of its range tomorrow. I know that'll affect many of us. Um, <laughs> uh, we've got the star there as well. Stevie Wonder has op to make him see. Uh, singing legend Stevie Wonder has told a church congregation he will undergo revolutionary eye surgery in a bid to regain his sight. No. How about that? I met Stevie Wonder, you know. It's actually, it was a bit of a... Because he's one of my heroes, Stevie Wonder. I met him at last year's Brits. Did I tell you this, I tell you this story? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I won't bother that. Okay, let's get in there. <laughs> Uh, okay, first of all, is uh, I thought this was going to be the best story of the year. I thought it was going to make Ron Davis and all that lot run for cover. This is this sounded to me like the most outrageous story I've ever heard. Turns out to be harmless, but I'll read it to you anyway. Uh, it starts promisingly. Police stopped a leading Tory with a lorry full of sheep and found he was wearing no trousers. <laughs> <laughs> now you start a story like that, I'm thinking, no, <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, but no, Glyn Davis, Tory agriculture spokesman in the Welsh Assembly, mm. uh, apparently took his trousers off after he fell in a load of manure. And that's why oh, yeah, yeah, apparently yeah, yeah. perfectly yeah. Yeah. perfectly innocent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was he in the front or the back of the lorry? Um, <laughs> <laughs> doesn't, doesn't say, say does it? Yeah. He just said he was cuddling a sheep. He actually doesn't say that at all. He was driving. <laughs> he, was he was driving, driving with his trousers around his ankles. He was, wasn't cuddling any sheep, nothing. There's that's no suggestion funny, though. That. How just funny just anyway. funny. Yeah. To me, just, oh, do you know what? Though? Had to drive in your underpants. I, have you ever done that? No, I haven't. I sometimes, no, I'm not kidding. Sometimes I do in the summer. Do you? Yeah, I'd like to drive. I just no, no, just my pants, nothing else. Not just my pants, and I'll drive along that. And I just love the and freedom. A pair of wellies. Yeah, I'll have a scratch at the lights. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind telling you that. <laughs> and I'll try and direct the aircon down there. <laughs> <laughs> just, it's just what I do. Uh, That's a sexy reputation. It is. I know it is. It's very sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Cigarette makers yesterday. I think I've got. An, I've had an idea, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Cigarette makers yesterday sent a gift to reward a customer for her loyalty. Yeah. 14 months after she was killed by lung cancer. Can you believe that? The woman had smoked 20 Lambert Butlers a day since the age of 15, uh, but the brand makers, Imperial Tobacco, sent her a complimentary umbrella with a card featuring a smiling face saying, you've been with us a long time. I mean, what good is an umbrella anyway to a smoker? I suppose you can smoke in the rain or whatever, but it seems pretty pathetic. All these sort of smokers' gifts you get as like loyalties. What I think the cigarette companies should do is you should be able to save tokens, and actually at the end of it, they'll pay for things for your funeral. Because, <laughs> you know, most of the stuff, they always send you clocks, don't they, and stuff that's really useful while you're alive. Mm. But frankly, you're going to need something, you know, to cover your funeral costs. I reckon collect 4,000, 400 points, bunch of flowers. Lovely. If you're, or a wreath. Um, 1,000 points, small urn. Uh, 8,000 points, proper marble gravestone from the catalogue. <laughs> nice. And 50,000 smoker points, you get the full mausoleum. <laughs> Massive, looks like a huge packet of B&H. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it seems so sensible to us, doesn't it? It's just a little thing they can do for us. So smokers are really saving for their future. No funeral costs when they get a premature death. <laughs> Sm I mean, cigarettes one of the few things that actually do do what they say on the packet. Kill you. <laughs> Guarantee. I know Ron Seal claimed the same thing, but smokers really do it. I don't think, uh... Are you anyway. being buried or cremated when you go? When I go, mm. oh, I'm going to go. Oh, buried at sea, please. Oh, really? oh, a naval burial would be marvellous, wouldn't it? Wow, what music With the are Union you Jack have? over you. <laughs> Down you go. That would be stunning. It's just the same, you're not awake to enjoy the last slide, isn't it? Really? <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be, mar be a marvellous way to go. Yeah. I mean, it's how a lot of budgies go in the end, don't they, if you think about it? Down the loop. <laughs> naval star. Oh, um, don't say that. No, I would kind of envy budgies for that. They get the, there's three burials of budgies, isn't there? I'm buried not, in the garden. Yeah, no, there's, there's, yeah, that's what they said. There's, there's buried in the garden. That's the army burial. Mm. There's naval burial down the loo, mm. and there's the air force burial out the car window at high speed. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, a lot of people do that. I don't condone it. I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying that's what happens. <laughs> okay, it's sorry. True. No, sorry, it sorry is, there are a lot of budgie true. fans in the house. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you know, I've never struck a nerve with you lot before. I start. Hey, start leave talking about off budgies. The budgies. Lay off the budgies. Come on, please. leave the parrot. All right, sorry. Trill, trill all round. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, here's a story about William Shatner. Uh, last time we checked up, this is in Pandora in the Independent. Uh, last time we checked up on William Shatner, he was um, 
snogging a pretty blonde at a New York hotel. The embrace was curtailed, leaving red faces when the couple realised other hotel guests were watching. In an enterprising move that even Dr Spock would have admired, Shatner stepped away from his companion, announcing, She's my sister. <laughs> so there's nothing going on. <laughs> oh! uh, William! That's, that, yeah, oh. William, that's got a warp factor of ten on it, that has. Did you yeah. see Star Trek yesterday, though? No, I missed it. A I've, particularly I've... fine episode. I am, of course, Which one do you fan. watch? Which one do you...? Uh, I'm Jean-Luc Picard, who I am voting for <laughs> as Mayor of London. Really? Jean-Luc Picard? <laughs> and anything you want, he could just go, make it so. Yeah. <laughs> make it so. Yeah. I'll put, it, I'll put it on the screen, Captain. Make it so. Um, I like the other one, the one you don't like. What, the watch? old one? No, the one with the foxy Spake, living three, droid three, with the sort of silver three, face, where's the skin type things? Oh, you've just wiped newspaper print. That's all right, it looks forehead. manly and rugged. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I work in papers. <laughs> um, 62. This is the most strange thing I've heard of the Ministry of Defence doing. They do a lot of. They, People generally move out, scientists, experimenters, researchers, a lot of cruelty to animals to, to check if it's going to be safe for humans. This seems like the strangest example I've ever heard. 62 goats used in tests on escaping from submarines mm. were killed this year by the Ministry of Defence, MPs were told yesterday. 62 goats? So they use goats to check if men can get out of a submarine. <laughs> I don't see that. Follows. Can they climb up ladders? Well, that's what I'm worried about, especially that they're probably their woolly jumpers and the hats will probably get they snagged. They dress them as well. They dress them up. They dress them and they dress them, them up in, in woolly jumpers with the backwards hats, and they're, they're down there. It's like and they <laughs> sail it all up that. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> dive, <laughs> dive, <laughs> dive! It's just goats. Sixty-two goats on a submarine. That's what they give them. They all escape, and they all just look at the ladder, <laughs> thinking. <laughs> 62 goats on a submarine. Hallelujah. Yeah. 62 goats on a submarine. Oh, oh they love that in the back there. <laughs> the Banto Dame's loving that. Yay! 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 Very much indeed. <laughs> That just seems mad. That is crap. There's only one way for a goat to leave a sub, and that's through the torpedo tube. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how you send them out. It's no good going up a ladder. Goats can't do that. It's madness. No wonder they all died. Um, no, that really upsets me, that does. As you can see. Uh, commuters listened in amazement as they were told, this is the weirdest excuse I've ever heard in my life for a late train. <laughs> Imagine if you're a commuter on this train. OK. Commuters listened in amazement as they were told their train was being delayed. Do you know why? Because the driver was too short to reach the pedals. <laughs> <laughs> Keep up the annoyance of that. Even, even the old Cockney in sounds laughing today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the conductor walked up and down the aisles to explain why the train was standing still as passengers boarded the train at Middlesbrough Station on Wednesday. He told them uh, the service is delayed today because the driver is only five foot one and his swivel chair is broken. He's too short to reach the pedals. <laughs> the thing is, wow. can you imagine there's going to be people on that train who are going to arrive at somewhere late? Isn't it? And they've now got to pass on that ridiculous excuse. <laughs> now, what happened was I was on this train and the driver's too short to reach it. It just sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? <laughs> and on each ticket, it's time. If British Rail, I mean, not British Rail, if the rail companies, sorry, a bit old school to be there, if they're going to repeatedly have, like, you know, leaves on the track, and these excuses they're offering sound so feeble, you should at least hand out a certificate, like a sick note, yeah. to people yeah, on the train. Because yeah, yeah. you go to the point, you say, <laughs> sorry, I'm late, what happened was the driver's legs are too short. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By my beard. <laughs> um, so it'd be much nicer if you had a certificate. You go, there it is, from British Rail. <laughs> or there's like a time clock, and as you go out, you can punch off the train so you can see what time you got on, what time you got off. Turn up at a point, you go, yeah, I'm late, but it's not a big deal, because look, I, it's British Rail's <laughs> fault, not mine. <laughs> there should be some cash comeback on that. It should be yeah. on, your, on your ticket. You can say what time you got on and what time you got off, so mm. that people can see, yeah, it's not his fault. We're not going to sack him for being late for this vital appointment. Mm. Sometimes Thank I speak such sense, I don't know where it comes from. Do you know what? <laughs> 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 you, um, are we on to the... No, do you know what? I've got time for one more story, haven't Hooray! I? Yeah. Chernobyl's going to be shut down by a new, uh, shut by new leak days after refit. Uh, Chernobyl nuclear power station was shut down yesterday, only six days after it was restarted following a major refit. A leak was found in the pipes that take radioactive water to the Ukrainian plant's emergency cooling system. Not the, the vegetable. Is, no, not the vegetable. <laughs> uh, do you know what? Here, the, the, the Russians, they're sort of blackmailing us in a strange way. This kind of annoys me, so I'm doing it at the end. It's on a sadder note, this. Uh, in 1995, the Ukrainian government promised a group of seven industrial nations it would close Chernobyl in exchange for £1.9 billion in international aid. It's like a loaded gun. Um, he says, however, it is now threatening to keep the plant open beyond next year's deadline unless the West provides money for new power stations. So it's going to keep it going unless we cough up with the cash to give them new power. 
Excuse me, what we need is a TV telethon for Chernobyl. Uh, with the mascot, Pudsky, like a three-armed bear. <laughs> That's like the mascot of it. France has just pledged 45 million rubles. Let's look at the totaliser. Still not enough pledges. Can't turn it off yet. Keep the cash coming. That's the sort of situation we're dealing with. Absolutely ridiculous. I'm going to get stuck in with the puns. Here they are. Hey. Hey. Oh, can you just put that in Irony Corner for me? Thank you very much. <laughs> it's a postman who's been sacked, uh, and it, the reason was he didn't get a letter. In the mail? Yeah, they're telling him to go to a tribunal. He says well, it wasn't delivered. Just stick it in there. Uh, from yesterday's start, a court awards damages to a woman who slipped in a stripper's baby oil. The pun says, buff justice. Yeah. Yeah. Very oh, good. it's good. They've said what they've seen, yeah. Oh, yeah. lovely. Oh, no, it's good, but not great there, no. From today's sun, a nun is arrested carrying two lethal sword sticks. It's a brilliant pun. The pun says, Mugger Superior. Oh, yeah. exactly All the outstanding picks. I think Vicky's going to come in and give us the pun of the week, oh. ladies and gentlemen. Let's get very excited about that. Genuine real life cockney. She's brave in the element. She's out there now. Here she comes, Lisa. Here she comes. She's not very well either. Ill yesterday when she actually a lookalike cropped up in the pay per view. We weren't right, able Vicky. to see her. Hey! Vicky's here, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Vicky. Real life Hi. cockney. Genuine real life cockney. She's blaming. Genuine real life cockney. <laughs> you can touch her. Touch her. <laughs> Oh, 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 get back! Oh, get back! Look, you dropped your, your... Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Quite know what to call it. Um, <laughs> OK, from Tuesday's Mirror. Computer chips are inserted into trees. I've got a massive belch coming. I don't know if oh. I can get out of it. I've covered it up. <laughs> to monitor their health. OK, computer okay. chips. Computer chips in trees to monitor their health. Monitor their health. Here we go. The pun says... Leaves online! Oh, that's a beauty! Isn't that lovely? There's a touch of genius in there. That's on its way to the mirror. Well done. You've got another pun of the week certificate. 